Okay, my first question is why are we debating? You know, I thought this was all settled. The Surgeon General of the United States in 1988 uh, issued a report on diet and health in America. And he said five of the ten leading causes of death are due to our diet, including obesity. And he said very clearly in his conclusions that it's due to the disproportionate consumption of foods high in fats, often at the expense of foods high in complex carbohydrates and fiber. So why are we heading in this other direction? I don't understand. You've heard that carbohydrates are bad for you. And if that were the case, when you looked to Japan, you'd see fat, sickly, lethargic people. And when those Japanese people moved to Washington, D.C., they'd get trimmer and healthier as they decrease their rice intake. Is that what you see? No. I was at a restaurant recently, and to my left at a table sat some first and second generation Japanese people eating rice looking trim, healthy, and young. On my table to the right sat some third and fourth generation Japanese people. What happened? Did they change their genetics? Uh-uh. They now eat less carbohydrate, less rice, and more protein, fat, dairy, and meat. You can see this. You don't have to be. Just look around. What you see worldwide is that in countries where people eat high carbohydrate diets, Africa, the Middle East, the Far East, they're trim, they have low rates of heart disease, breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer. And when they move to the United States and Western Europe and they abandon their high carbohydrate diet, they get fat and sick. You know, the first case of rheumatoid arthritis was described in Africa in 1957, and the first case of lupus was described in Africa in 1960. Today in the United States, the highest incidence of lupus and rheumatoid arthritis is among the African-American people. What happened in 40 years? Now, the high-protein diet books are all the rage, aren't they? For the last nine, that's what it's been. The most popular books. Well, there are some reasons for it. It's easy to follow a high-protein diet. You just throw away the hamburger bun, right? And they have done some good. They've made people aware of the harmful effects of sugar in refined foods. And that's very important. And people have lost weight, sometimes quickly, but rarely permanently. All high-protein diet books blame obesity on too much insulin, as you've heard today. That's the culprit, right? That's the evil hormone. Well, do they really? Let's take a look at the research. Suzanne Holt published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, 1997. She looked at insulin response to various foods. Brown pasta produces less insulin than beef. White pasta, less insulin than cheese. Porridge, less insulin than fish. 72 people were studied. This is from the Pritikin Institute. They put them on a three-week intensive diet and exercise program. 80% carbohydrate. These were diabetics, insulin-resistant resistant people, normal people. And they cut their insulin levels in half. They also cut their triglycerides nearly in half, too. Now you say, well, that's the exercise. Well, in part it is. But we've known that low-carbohydrate, high-fat feeding produces insulin resistance. That's what the scientific research says. And it also says that carbohydrate improves insulin sensitivity. Read the research. It's clear and it is consistent. Obesity has, has been mentioned as caused by too many calories. We're not eating less fat in this country. The research says we're eating about the same. But we're eating a lot more sugar. We're eating more flours. We're going to fast food industries more, snack foods, and we're not exercising as much. And I want to point out in the time that the high protein diets have ruled, the last eight to nine years, we've increased obesity from 12 to 18 percent. Something's missing. Now, the mechanism for short term weight loss. Dr. Atkins told you that the way his diet works is similar to fasting. Well, nature is designed to so that if we don't have food and we're starving to death, it doesn't hurt so much to die. So we develop ketosis, which suppresses the hunger drive, a natural mechanism. <laughs> ketosis also occurs when we get severely ill. And the reason is we're not supposed to be gathering and preparing food. We're supposed to be recuperating. So the natural mechanism that occurs when you get sick is the mechanism utilized in ketogenic diets, and that's why I call them the make-yourself-sick diets. The other way that they work, the other kind of diets, as uh, recommended by Dr. Sears and the Sugar Busters, is uh, a diet that results in semi-starvation. They, they invoke complicated rules and restrict foods. And of course, you can't stay on either one of these diets for very long because you can't stay sick forever, 
and you can't be hungry forever. The mechanism for long-term weight loss on a high-carbohydrate diet is the stomach is filled with fewer calories because this is a low-calorie dense diet. Fats are very calorie dense. Excess carbohydrates are not usually converted to fat, contrary to what you've heard today. Carbohydrate provides a high level of satiety and fat has a weak level of satisfaction of the appetite. Let me talk about this in a little more detail. Each of the stomachs contains 500 calories. The uh, stomachs at the bottom filled with meat, cheese, and butter barely make a dent in filling the stomach. Whereas the stomachs filled with rice, corn, and potatoes fill or overfill the stomach with the same 500 calories. When you switch from a high meat, high fat diet to a high carbohydrate diet, you decrease the calorie concentration by one fourth. In other words, for the same volume of foods, you got one fourth as many calories. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. The human body does the most efficient thing possible with everything that you give it. So you give it protein, which it utilizes to build things. You give it carbohydrate, which it utilizes to run the machinery. And you give it fat, which is the metabolic dollar that is saved for when food is no longer available, which never seems to happen. <laughs> Multiple studies and reviews have clearly shown that the body does not convert carbohydrate into fat under ordinary circumstances. It's called de novo lipogenesis. And according to this study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition and multiple studies, dietary carbohydrates do not appear to increase an individual's fat content by de novo lipogenesis. It's too wasteful to do that. But it effortlessly stores fat. In fact, so effortlessly, you know, you can come to somebody, you can stick a needle in their buttocks, thigh, or abdomen, suck the fat out, you can take it to the lab, you can analyze it, you can tell what they like to eat. If they like uh, cold water marine fish, they'll be full of omega-3 fats. They like uh, margarines and shortenings will be full of trans fats. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. As far as satisfaction of appetite, do you know that the potato, which has been maligned here today, <laughs> is among the most satisfying of all foods? It is seven times more satisfying than croissants and twice as satisfying as cheese and beef. Yeah. And fat has a very, very poor effect on satisfying the appetite. This has again been shown in multiple studies. Go to the National Library of Medicine, read it. It's clear and consistent. The satiating effect of fat is weak and carbohydrate-rich breakfast may assist weight control efforts by maintaining fullness. Yes, and John Blundell tells us that eating fat results in passive overconsumption and a disproportionate weak effect on satiety. In uh, my patients, I run a clinic at St. Lena Hospital where people eat as much as they want. They eat three times a day, they eat wonderful meals. And uh, the average weight loss for overweight men is 5.3 pounds in 11 days. And women is about 4 pounds in 11 days. I just uh, finished a one-year study for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota, and we found an 8% reduction in weighted patients at one year. That's a 16.5 pound weight loss. The National uh, Weight Control Registry was mentioned, very important study. The important thing for you to know is they studied 450 people, and those who were able to keep 30 pounds off for more than a year consistently ate a low-fat diet, which is a low-energy diet. In fact, 80% of them ate less than 30% fat, and 30% of them ate less than 20% fat. There's where the long-term results are. We also get cholesterol changes that are significant and important. We get a 29-point drop in cholesterol in 11 days at the clinic. If you start with high cholesterol, we get a 65-point drop in cholesterol in 11 days. And our triglycerides also drop. Uh, there's an average of a 10 10-point 10 10 point drop in triglycerides, but if you start with high triglycerides, say over 600, they drop on an average of 311 points. Now, the diet I recommend is a starch-based diet with the addition of fruits and vegetables. It is a traditional diet. It's what most people who have ever walked this planet have consumed. A diet of rice for Asia, a diet of pasta for Southern Europe, a diet of breads for Northern Europe, a starch-based diet with the addition of fruits and vegetables. Now, Throughout history, this is what most people consumed, except on special days, on holidays, on festival days. And then, then they celebrated. They danced in the street. They took the day off work. And maybe they roast a pig and have a feast. Now, most people could only do this on occasion. But in every society, there were some rich people. And they had so much fun at that party that they took that idea up to the hill and up to their castle. And they feasted three times a day, seven days a week. And do you remember what these aristocrats, kings and queens looked like? They look like Americans. That's what they look like. 
That's how I was raised. I started out every morning with Easter. I went on to Thanksgiving and Christmas for lunch and dinner. Every night after dinner, I had a birthday party. And that is the problem. We need to put rich food back into special occasions. If you're tired of looking like a king and queen, then what you need to do is eat a starch-based diet as the humankind has millions of years. Thank you very much. Wow. So um, the pendulum is swinging on the panel back towards, uh, obviously, the carbohydrate corner.